And we're going to get started. So welcome to the Conservation Commission. This is the Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021 meeting. Uh, let's, uh, for those who want to, let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty, justice for all. Uh, roll call. Uh, Zachary Bisconti? Here. Robert Cassidy? Absent. Heather Legere? Here. Uh, Natalie Pardo? Here. Ann Raponi? Absent. Joe Lavalley? Here. And John Shu? Here. Okay. So we sent out uh, on the agenda, we're going to do the review and approval of the meeting minutes from last month. I sent these out to everyone. Hopefully you had time to uh, look at them. If not, we have a copy here. Are there any uh, additions, corrections, deletions? Hearing none, I entertain a motion to... Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Minutes are approved. So is a representative from Hayes Engineering here? I don't see. All right. So we're going to skip down to number three. This is DEP file 061-0688, a request for certificate of compliance um, for 205 Revere Beach Parkway. You want to come up and uh, turn the mic on and state your name and address. Yep. Uh, good evening, uh, Rick Latini. I am a civil engineer with Howard Stein Hudson. I am the one that provided the affidavit for the certificate of compliance. I am here with Ms. Bejo, who represents the owner from Redgate Real Estate, as well as Ali Stearns, who's with Dobin Company, and they are the property managers. Um, I walked the site, and then obviously I sent the affidavit that there was uh, only some minor changes, like some drainage structures had moved, but the overall treatment train hadn't. And then one island was eliminated, but I actually realized that we increased an island size and added planting near a transformer, and I forgot to mention that on the site walk show. So the, the, the landscape is kind of, even it just got moved around the site too, kind of like the drainage. Um, mostly just for questions, because I feel like um, the site actually looked pretty good, I thought. Um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, been quite an improvement if you remember what the site looked like before we started the project. So I do have uh, the team here to answer any questions you might have. Okay. Uh, so, Zach, Joe, and myself, we did walk the site down. Do you have any questions or anything you want to? I believe I had a question in regards to the uh, the, the parking, um, but you know I can't recall it right now. Uh, give me some time. I'll think. About it. Well, actually, just to um, I think we're just trying to confirm is actually the, the surface parking was within the, the flood zone. It always has been, even when certain times was there. So I didn't count the number, but the, all the surface spaces that we saw, there was like maybe one or two that's outside of the floodplain. And as we discussed, the garages were built up so all structured parking's above the floodplain. Oh, and now I do remember the other question in regards to what kind of a plan do you have in case of a warning of a 100-year flood or any kind of other impending weather disaster about those cars getting out of there? Um, in case I mess this up, the property manager can come in. But uh, actually, they have notifications. They have actually a screen in front of you guys. Probably notice we were in there. And they also can email every tenant. And that's how they do it rather than 
signage, which I don't know if it'd be effective if you threw signage somewhere. I don't know where you put it actually. So that's how they do it. They notification notify them through email. I actually do have a, a follow up question. Do the tenants of those parts actually know that they are in the floodplain? Has it been notified to them? I am going to. I, well, I'm going to defer to ownership. If I get this wrong, but I think it's in the lease agreement, so they are aware of that way. Um, I, we could post something on, on bulletin board material too with an upcoming storms coming, but I think it's in the lease agreement. But don't quote me; I didn't sign the lease agreement. Okay. So the, the things I had flagged because I just went through the order of conditions and you know looked at what was required, and it said they had to have you know signs at the parking spots warn people they may have to warn or move their cars. I think it's probably okay, uh, you know, if it's in the lobby and they're getting emails. Um, snow, so I'm concerned about where they're going to pile snow. I know it's marked on the drawings. Uh, and when I went and reviewed the, the plans, it appears there's no snow allowed along that back fence. Uh, and I'm just interested in how you're going to enforce that because, you know, it's three in the morning, the snow plows are out, and they're moving snow. Uh, to be well, part, part of it is uh, those spaces would have to be empty for the plow to ever get to the, to the, to the, to the um, wall. So, but if they were completely empty, I would say the only place they could ever could possibly even think about it is maybe if come down that drive aisle, that main drive aisle. But for the most part, they'd be plowing, you know, perpendicular to the spaces. I don't think they'd go towards the wall. I mean... If you really thought it was worth it, we could put, uh, well, I don't want to speak to the owner, but perhaps they could put a sign just on that main aisle coming down because I couldn't see any other way that you'd get the snow there without trying. Well, I, I think the issue is, is piling snow up against that back fence and then it melting and not going through a treatment system. And yeah, it's, it's, it has, they have to get it right on that wall, though. Like, you know, with the guy right. real wall, is a, it's a very slim spot, and um, I would... Uh, I assume they tell their contractors how to plow out there too. But once again, if it's it's usually pretty well parked there, so they wouldn't even be able to get to the wall. As when we were out there, you saw that most of it was parked, except maybe on the hotel end. Yeah. And then uh, we wanted to see maintenance logs. I will have to send those to you later. And uh, the reason why is they used to have Graystar do the property management, and they switched teams, and they didn't leave the logs with them. And uh, the property manager, Ken Boucher, they just cleaned everything this, uh, I think, past August or September, so we can send you those logs. Unfortunately, we have to try to find the old ones if you want a, a history for the last couple of years on them. Yeah. Um. Hi. Uh, my name is Liz Bejo. Um, so the property management firm was actually managing that property from when it was occupied through this summer, 2021. So it's kind of very untimely. Um, we have now Dolben Management, um, who is managing as of July, June, June um, of this year. And in August and October, um, I believe it is that they did um, cleaning of the area drains and catch basins. Um, but we actually reached out to Graystar to try to get access to the logs, and they don't have access to the system anymore. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have anything from the last three years. Do, do you have the recent logs? From August and October. Yeah. Do, yes. Do you, can, yeah. do you have them here? We can provide that. So this was just created. Um, yeah. 
I'm not quite sure how to address that. It, it, I mean, it. it um, what do you guys think? I think we can make it a condition of their um, certificate of a compliance that going forward they provide quarterly maintenance logs, also a snow removal plan. Um, in that, in their snow contract agreement with their contractor, they can make arrangements to, uh, if they don't have an appropriate place to keep the snow that's uh, far enough away from the resource areas that you uh, truck the snow away. But it's, I feel like the site, I wasn't, I'm sorry, I wasn't there for the walkthrough, but I think it's large enough to accommodate a bunch of snow. Um, but you never know if there's gonna be one of those crazy storms um, I've had, I've managed buildings where we've had to truck it out as a condition of an order, uh, a conservation commission order. Yeah. I mean, so those conditions already exist. It's, they had to designate where the snow has to be put. It can't be put in these areas, can't melt untreated. Uh, my question was, how do you enforce that? Um, you know, signage would be possibly helpful for the snow plow, you know, at three in the morning. Um, the other, and, and maintenance logs are, are also a condition, and the, the Conservation Commission has the right to request to come on site and inspect. You know, we have to give notice, uh, you know, that type of thing. So, um, I think other than those items, everything else was done in substantial completion um, of the order of conditions. So, does anyone else have any questions? All right, do you guys have anything else? All right, so do we wanna vote on Approving the certificate of completion. It, so it's really not a public hearing. It's um, it's an open between us and them. Um, so we need a motion to approve their certificate. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, it's unanimous. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. All right, it'll be a week or so. Okay. And Zach, good luck with your move. <laughs> so we're going to go back to uh, someone from Hayes Engineering. No problem. Um, No problem. If, if you make sure the mic's on and you know, state your name and address. Uh, thank you, Anthony Capacetti, uh, Hayes Engineering, six hundred three Salem Street, Wakefield, Massachusetts, for the applicant. Okay. Um, so, so this is DEP file number zero six one dash zero seven seven four. It's an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. It's it's an area off Muzzy Street. Uh, it's very hilly and rocky. Uh, this has been done before, and my understanding was uh, Hayes Engineering was basically validating and remarking uh, all of the different areas. That is correct. So uh, there's been two other water resource area determinations for this property. Um, there hasn't been much done out here. There has been no significant changes in hydrology. The wetland lines are, are very uh, much the same. I believe our botanist, uh, Elizabeth Wallace, uh, who was out on the site, reviewed the line after we, we stated she moved a couple of flags slightly, but nothing significantly, and those changes are reflected on the plan that's in front of you. Uh, the wetland areas are shown in uh, the, the green highlighted areas here. And uh, it, where it is so rocky and hilly, uh, there are some pretty distinct changes into the wetland areas from the, the upland areas. Um, and this is just a, a matter of process to preserve the wetland line. Um, I believe that, you know, should they decide to go forward, this would just kind of uh, uh, eliminate one step 
uh, should a notice of intent be filed. Uh, so the wetland line would be set and we would be able to, to base a design yeah. off that. So I did go out and, and walk the A series and B series flags down and you could see some of the old ones and um, so all the new ones, they appear to be in the same spots. This is something the commission has approved twice before. This hasn't really changed. I also just happened today in the files, uh, saw uh, previous, the files for this previously and peer review had been done. So uh, I think it's uh, okay. Anyone have any questions on this? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, on which side of, of the green line is the uh, wetlands area? Up or down? And uh, the possibility of development would be in that larger patch in the middle? So right now there is no plan. Previous plans that have been put together uh, looked at coming in through uh, Saugus and developing in this area. Uh, Town of Saugus is not crazy about that idea, so they've never gone anywhere. So. Again, right now, as they try and figure out where they're going, they just want to preserve the wetland line, and they don't really have a, a project in the pipeline yet uh, as they continue to deal with Saugus. They own, a, uh, they own th this area here, and it actually goes out to, uh, to Route 1. Uh, so most of the, the land is in Saugus. As they try and work through for, for access through Saugus, there may be something that comes up, but we just want to preserve the wetland line. Is that street you pointed out a paper street, or is, does it exist um, on the Saugus line? Right, yeah, right there. I believe Laurel Street exists all the way um, to the end here, and then this goes. Uh, you, you can take a right. Um, we don't show the the actual street, but you can actually see that it is uh, built by the contours. And then there's another road that goes in that direction there. Well, was the issue with Saugus uh, access to Route One? Uh, access through the residential neighborhood. Uh, for, and this goes back years. Uh, I think one of the issues was access to a uh, commercial pr piece of property through a residential neighborhood uh, was one of the times that they had issues. Um, then we looked at doing residences and they still wanted us to, to route all the traffic back through Revere somehow. Uh, so we have some planning to, to deal with, but uh, you know, the, the property owner does want to maintain his right and not have to you know, if he's ever able to work something out with Saugus, not have to kind of reinvent the wheel and uh, and come back. So, so this is a is a hearing on this. Is there anyone else in the audience that has a question? Is here for this? I don't think so. Um, it's hotly contested in Revere. I can. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, anyone on the commission? Yeah. So we're just observing the changes, basically. Uh, so what you're saying is that the, the wetlands as they were flagged um, remain the same and you're memorializing the line so if we were to come back with the project at some point in time um, we would be able to design around this wetland line and know that this is the 100 foot buffer zone line any work within this would be under your jurisdiction and if, if we felt that we didn't want to come back here we could keep all the work outside the 100 foot buffer zone line um, and stay out of all conservation areas. I see okay thanks. Yeah. And they did go back and add the buffer zone line around all of that. It was, and I don't believe that you certify the buffer, only the resource areas. So that's should, right. That's right. At some point in time, should DEP decide to increase or decrease a buffer zone, we would only be held to the to the resource area line. And that's correct. Right. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? All right, we're going to close the hearing and. I guess we need a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that's unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much for All your right. time. It'll take uh, a week or so to get the, the paperwork out. Thank you, you bet. So that next is number four. Um, So this little, I handed it out 
earlier, uh, this one here, Heather. So I have a letter here from uh, John Festa of Joseph Festa Construction Company. And I'll just read it. I'm writing this letter to officially propose a donation of land from Joseph Festa Construction Company Incorporated for conservation purposes. The land is located on Emanuel Street in Revere, Massachusetts. I respectfully request to be on November's Conservation Commission agenda. Uh, it's lot C of Emanuel Street, block parcel unit 18.324G-1B. Uh, and th this is it. And I vexed that lot that's behind that large house. Uh, I did talk to some folks in the city. Why would the city, I, I mean, in the Conservation Commission, we are interested in, in land for nice conservation purposes, protect the wetlands, things like that. But this particular one's a little stranded, uh, but feedback from the city is they take these and then if they need to trade it for something later on with uh, like the DCR or something, they can do that. Um, so they're, they're in favor of doing it. So what we would be voting on is approving uh, a letter coming from the commission recommending that the city council uh, accept this property and donation. So any questions? I have to make a motion to that. All right. Second? I'll second that motion. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, I think you missed out on that. So we have a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That's unanimous. Okay. All right, next up is um, a potential enforcement action at 630 Revere Beach Boulevard. Uh, I issued a, uh, a notice of warning of potential violation uh, to the owner and asked that they come before uh, the commission to kind of explain, you know, what they're doing uh, so we could have a conversation and then the commission can kind of, you know, figure out what the path going forward is. So I sent that in an email. If anyone needs to see the letter or anything, let me know. Um, so we have the owners here. If you guys come forward and state your name and address. Marshall Center, 630 Rivera Beach Boulevard. Okay. And Edward Lopez, 630 Rivera Beach Boulevard. Okay. So, I mean, there was a bunch of work, removal of soil in the backyard without uh, a permit from the commission. So I had asked you guys if you could come up with, uh, you know, a proposal on what you're going to do to uh, mitigate or what your final plan was that. Is that something we would have approved? Um, yeah, um, well, first of all, um, the, the address of the house or the particular Can you move that mic just a little bit there you go particular um, building was with a bunch of issues the soil was way high to stack my water and I go back to the garage and uh, I fixed that issue well the only thing to fix them out was take them out of the soil like you saw in it put it in away and now no more water in the garage, no more water in the basement was the principle. Now if I proceed, uh, if I forget, I'd say, mm, I don't forget. I don't forget nothing about that. You say, I'm gonna, I should pull my permit. You should do what? I should pull my permit to oh. remove it. Uh, well, and it uh, was in a very right moment to water and this just by myself. I say, ah, nothing's gonna happen. I'm gonna fix it when it's, when it's time. I'm gonna just gonna pull them out, permit something, just it's gonna be okay. 
you know, all of the sun I saw a bunch of picture thunder from, from you is, I don't know, would be taken from satellite or the ovnis or they just show up in the city hall like that. Uh, is invasion of property. First of all, nobody has asked to get in. I'm not going to nobody's land or nobody's house to take a picture and send it to the city hall. Even my neighbor doesn't have a garage in the house. Is all that sowing is with a peach to my to my driveway. That water is affecting to my house too. There's a bunch of issues to go and say, oh, I'm not going to knock the door. Hey, why is you see the water coming from your roof, passing my my driveway, getting in my land? I'm no crime baby, you know. I just let it go. I have to be alone with a neighbor, and uh, they know, they don't like me. I, I, like I see the pictures. So Something happened. So do you have a plan on? My plan is just take out, take out the soil right there and uh, put it in like a bed. And, uh, and on top of that, put a blue pressure stone. Nothing else. There's no dry walls or nothing, nothing major. So, so the, the concern from the Conservation Commission is the back of your lot abuts the turning circle to get to Riverview. It's kind of weird. And so between that turning circle and the back of your house is a wetlands uh, and drainage. And it's it, it, it I been over tie. there. So you know we want to control sediment running off your property as it is now before it leaves your property. Um, had you come before the commission, I mean, I can't speak for the whole commission, but there was a likelihood you probably could have had plans approved for what you wanted to do. Um, I removed the soil maybe like 10 inches. Yeah, yeah, I mean. When you push it, it's and I push it aside. It's, it's right. right. Um, so, but you're going to have to stabilize the sides. Exactly, um, that's it. Crushed stone on the top. There's going to need to be a final elevation. You're going to adhere to whatever that is. Um, we get the same level with the driveway. It's, it's, it's sloped down, right? It's sloped down. So, so a drawing, a, a plan of what that's going to look like would be very helpful. And I think if you had that, and then you, in this case, because we're not at yet to an enforcement order. Mm -hmm. If you file a notice of intent, notify the abutters, do the legal notice, submit the plan to us for review. If everything's okay, eventually you get an order of conditions and then we can close this whole thing out. I don't think so I'm gonna do right away that situation because I'm pretty much tired with a neighbor complaint and then a neighbor trying to, yeah. they say, I'm just gonna leave it for a while until I got my in my head the good plan and making nice what is gonna be my so, fire pit, my maybe a pool, maybe a castle in the back, something yeah. like that. You know I mean? So we're we're trying to work with you to, to, to get this out. Uh, we didn't go to an order of enforcement. Mm -hmm. Had we gone there, we could have dictated a timeline of when you will do things. So I don't want to do that, but I would like you to come up with a timeline that is a little bit sooner than later. Well, uh, um, I got um, the guy who was doing the, the survey was going to be doing the, all the plans for the back, maybe what is the, the pipes coming in from the garage, mm -hmm. those things. Is, uh, I think it's, uh, what do you say? It's, well, he was on vacation, and I just spoke with him Monday. about the type of drawing, whether he does it or he gets an engineer. And that was why I had sent the email to you to ask right. what kind of drawing. So, so I'm, we're we have to talk right. now. I know 
he's not going to do it because I don't think he'll do the notice of intent. He's going to, he's giving me a name and he's going to contact that person for them to be able to do the drawing. Oh, sorry, Rob, could you please use the microphone? The people at home can't, the can't hear you. That's a close. Oh, buddy. <laughs> sorry. Okay. So I had contacted the surveyor and they came back from vacation on Monday and I spoke with him and he said if it was a notice of intent, he would have someone else to do the drawing. And so he was waiting for me to say, because I said my email, what type of drawing you're looking for. So I'll go back to him and then we can start the process of getting someone to be able to do the drawing and, and create the notice of intent. Okay. But that's why I don't have anything here now for a drawing. So it, it sounds like the earliest we would, I'm talking to you guys, would be the January uh, commission okay. meeting that that means you would have to have the drawings submitted by the middle of December the notice of intent submitted by the middle of December your a, a butter notice and then you have to file a notice in the newspaper okay. um, and that would all have to happen by the middle of December for us to uh, the plan f finish this you know during the January commission meeting does that sound like a reasonable schedule it sounds reasonable, assuming the people that are going to do this notice of intent will be able to fit in that schedule with us. We'll the, tell them you what mean create the drawing? Yeah. yeah, we'll tell them what the, the drawing, you know, what yeah. our deadline is. Yeah. All we have to do is the draw. we have to do the drawing. We have to notify the abutters. And Can I ask a quick question? What exactly is the purpose? It sounds like they're located on or near a wetland and there's silt or uh, water going from their house to the wetland. I don't think it is right now with the way the soil is piled up against the back fence and side fences. They pretty much have dammed yeah. it up. Uh, but the final result would you know, water's going to travel off their property back into that wetlands. So and they're during they're doing construction. You're doing some construction, or this was has been done previously. It's done. It's it's. it's done. We moved. The dirt has been moved. Oh, they, okay. It's already been moved. Okay. No construction. It's pushing aside. Yeah, there's no construction. It's just it, the land. The water. The land was very high. Yeah. So the water could not go into the backyard, and then. We ended up with a flooded garage and water in the base, basement. So we were just trying to alleviate the water, you know, the 20 we inches we had. Coming back, or coming this way to the garage in a, in a basement, we bring little down. We brought the land down. You yeah. pitched it, I see. Yeah. It does sound like you need somebody to kind of help you with that water situation. Yeah, Maybe a French it, drain or catch basin type system. To we be did it already. That's, that's, that's the final situation is when you push the soil to the sides, that get fixed because the water go a little better. So in front of the garage, there's the French drain and then there's a pipe to a certain, not all the way back, but to a point. Mr. Chairman, may I? How long have you owned this property? It'll be a year and like a week. When you bought the property, was the elevation of the land in the back the same as before, before you moved it? You moved, you moved soil in the back to stop flooding, Wait. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So does that mean that when you bought the property, that area was flooding? Yeah. Prior yeah. to? So, at the end of the driveway, it was all flooded and it was going into the garage. So, so it's, when what, we did, had, what did the previous owner have to say? They, that, that was the, the problem. Say, uh, even the uh, neighbors, they was telling me, you're going to get water in the garage, you're going to get water in the basement, you're going to get... You say, and we did. Uh, it, we, <laughs> we got... Over the, over the months, we get the water. They say, how I can fix it? And they say, I fix them up. I fix it. By it's moving the dirt, yeah. The house was rented for many years. The owner had passed away and left it to the relatives. 
and they rented it for six or seven years. So no one really cared that there was water. They didn't do anything to help. And a neighbor was taking advantage for the, especially for the house and bring the water with a, in a the lady, what's the name? Well, a fence. They put a wall and it just wall. went right into our garage. It just, right in. With a piece. So. It, no garage. It's a pretty simple solution that they've done. Uh, and I think done properly, it's not going to impact neighbors uh, and it won't impact anything behind them. Uh, the issue is, is the little plan, uh, you know, they've done it without uh, in order conditions issued by the commission. So we're just trying to bring them back into compliance. Any more questions, Joe? All right. So the plan is if the rest of the commissioners are in agreement is you will submit a plan for a notice of intent. You'll submit the notice of intent and get everything in place, public notice, notice of the abutters, so that we can then uh, approve this with an order of conditions or make other suggestions at the January 2022 conservation meeting, which means you have to have everything kind of put into place by middle of December. And in the meantime, you can't do any more back there. Nothing is going to happen. All right. Is you guys okay with that? Yes. Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's the game plan. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right, um, we're going to shoehorn in something else just under item five before we get to six and seven on the agenda. I've handed these out. This is another potential enforcement action. Um, sorry for the first page, it's a little blurry, but that blue, um, we're looking at this one here. That blue circle is eight Marshview Terrace and the house just above it is 10 Marshview Terrace. 10, Mar uh, 10 Marshview Terrace, the house above, had had some correspondence with the former chair of the commission asking, and there's an email trail about whether or not his house was in conservation commission jurisdiction. It's not in a floodplain. So he was told no. He wanted to do some work in his backyard. He was issued permits. And then during a permit inspection, uh, they saw they had filled in a whole bunch of the backyard. And not only did they fill in their backyard, the neighbor did also. And so I was asked, is this, you know, in conservation jurisdiction? And I went on. Oliver, the Massachusetts Oliver GIS system. It's really kind of easy to use. So if you look at the next page, so eight and 10, I'm sorry, eight's the one that um, had the conversation. So eight's the house at the top, 10 is the one with the blue dot on it. This area with the blue hatch uh, is the wetlands, is identified on the DEP. Uh, Oliver GIS system. There's a gray line to the left. You can see that. And I got red arrows pointing down. So that gray line and everything to the right of it is an area of critical environmental concern. So you can see on the right of this page where you have all the green hatchwork. That's the Pine and Saugus Rivers. It's a big flat. That is, you know, marsh and swamp and wetlands. Um, habitat, there's just all sorts of stuff there. And then down at the bottom is Rumney Marsh. You can see that those blue wetlands 
it all drains into Rumney Marsh. Um, uh, you know, Joe and I out there, we did the site visit. They filled it with rubble. So there's broken brick, there's broken block, there's broken stone, there's broken concrete in there, plus dirt. The plan was they were going to fill it, compact it, put topsoil on it, plant grass. Uh, and they kind of did it all the way up, correct me if I'm wrong anywhere here, Joe, but up, up to the edge of this gully, you know, which eventually drains, you know, right there to Rumney Marsh. Um, if you look at the order of conditions that the state has, just the normal order of conditions, they never allow rubble as fill. It has to be clean fill. We don't know what this came from. Is there asbestos in the binder of the concrete? Is there heavy metal? We just don't know. Is this going to leach? You know, that type of thing. Um, I spoke to the state. Uh, you know, we, we, we kind of want to work with uh, the, the homeowners, and I think we still can, but this is such a large thing. Uh, what I was going to do, but we're so close to the meeting, I was going to issue an order of enforcement on the chair's signature, which can be done in kind of an emergency situation, but then it always has to come back to the commission for open debate, and then it can be modified, it can be withdrawn, all, all of those things. Uh, but since we were meeting so close, I said, well, let's just discuss it at the meeting, uh, what, what we should do. I think this is way more than what we just talked about. Um, it requires an enforcement order because that allows us to dictate and work with them on what they need to do to fix it. And the state, uh, the state folks I talked to, they were pretty adamant, don't do this with a notice of intent. Uh, there's a lot of pitfalls on something like that, a notice of intent. Um, but the order of enforcement, we have the ability to, you know, do a timeline. So I've written one up. It's the same for both properties. You have a copy of one. Um, so it's on the third page there in the middle. Here's what I'm proposing, and we can change this uh, based on your input. What I wrote was, since this area drains into Rumney Marsh, an erosion sedimentation barrier needs to be installed to prevent sediment runoff from the property until a restoration slash mitigation plan has been approved and implemented. Owner will need to hire a qualified wetland scientist to determine the extent of the impacted area and to develop a restoration slash mitigation plan. The owner shall appear before the Conservation Commission at the December 1st, 2021 meeting to report on the progress of the development of the restoration slash mitigation plan. The plan will be reviewed and decided upon by the Conservation Commission no later than the January 5th, 2022 meeting. Uh, and we have the ability to move these deadlines around. Uh, we just have to vote on it later if, if you know, for good, good reason they just can't, it's winter, um, so we have that ability. Once the plan is approved, work should be completed as soon as practical, but no later than March 31st, 2022. Um, I felt there needed to be some urgency in this, but again, we can, we can move deadlines around uh, based on weather and uh, you know, that, that type of thing, but we just have to vote upon it as a group. Uh, so what I'm hoping is a wetland scientist will come up with a reasonable plan on what they can do to, uh, to mitigate this and restore uh, these wetlands. You know, I was thinking, you know, they could slope down to that gully and then plant, you know, a 30 foot barrier of native species. Cause what was there and is there what's left is all Phragmites and Japanese knotweed and a bunch of invasive species. So if we could get a much, if we could get that rid of and a much better native stuff, I think that would be, would be good. Um, but I think a wetland scientist is gonna have to guide them through, you know, what needs to be done. Um, 
I didn't see a way to do it uh, with, you know, file a notice of intent. And, um, so the issue there was, um, well, I don't think that matters. So what, uh, uh, I did provide a couple of pictures that I took. It's that third page. I mean, they, they um, if you get a chance, go on all over GIS and look at, you get a much clearer picture. You can see what was, there's a 2019 uh, aerial. So you can see what was there two years ago. I have a question, John. You're proposing this just for 10 Marsh View, but not for... I just gave you the one. They're both exactly the same. Okay. So to do the same thing for, yeah, for both? Yeah, I've got one for eight and I've got one for 10. Okay. Um, I have a question. Um, what was the purpose for installing this fill in the first place? They don't have much of a backyard um, as it was before, from what I could tell from the pictures. And so this greatly expanded their backyard and is going to make it, you know, a level. Uh, eight Marsh View, they've, they've put in a big patio. Uh, and he was looking to also put a swimming pool in. Uh, he's he's going to hold up on that. Uh, when you look around at some of their neighbors, you know they got nice pig backyards, and you know these they didn't. The, the last house there at the bottom, on that top picture, they have kind of manicured their wetlands, and they actually have you know they don't have invasive species in there. There's a little pond back there, grasses. Um, they were looking to level theirs also. <laughs> um, but that's what I think, what, what they wanted to do. Uh, does, the, um, does the restoration plan, I know we talked about the barrier, but does it also involve removing the fill that they've already put in and replacing it with? I believe, and this is my opinion, that a wetland scientist will say that, yes. And then they would be responsible for doing that. Yes, yeah. And I know they're not here right now, but are they aware that all of this is happening? Um, so, uh, no. Uh, they, they know that when Joe and I left and walked away that I was needing to consult uh, with the state on just, you know, what was the best course going forward. And I did, you know, they asked a question, what is, you know, worst case, what's the best case? Uh, you know, best case is you get what you got right now. Worst case is it's got to go back the way it was before. Where it ends up, I don't know. Uh, but I do, and I uh, tried to manage your expectations a little bit that they are going to have to hire uh, a consultant to get plans prepared on how to rectify this. And, and maybe there's a middle ground. I'm not sure yet at this time. So. Um, so yeah, they know it's coming. So I guess I want to know if you guys, are you guys okay with this approach? Uh, I mean, if, if we decide not to do it, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I think this makes sense. I mean, you're taking the DEP's lead. They made the recommendations pretty much, right? This is, well, this is on us. Um, and it's on us to enforce. What I but this is what, if, if we didn't, then I would believe the DEP would step in and, um, yeah, yeah, and that's what you don't want. Right. So. Okay. Absolutely. This looks like a good plan. I agree with the timelines as well, because even with the winter time, we want to make sure that any snow that goes there, once it melts, all that runoff is going to go right into the marshland. So we want to make sure we fix this before that happens, because then yeah. damage will really be done. So I, th I think the immediate stuff they need to do is install the barriers, uh, and that can be done while they're developing the plans and then figuring out how to, to do what they need to do. So, um, this would be issued to them in the next week or so? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. Or we'll mail it tomorrow. Okay. So I actually have copies here for everyone to sign. I get, and, and don't leave after the meeting. we got some stuff to sign here. So. Is everyone in favor of this course of action? 
Yeah. Well. I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So I will do that. All right. Lastly, uh, items six and seven. So for the sake of the recording, uh, item six is the resignation of board member Natalie Pardo effective November 30th, 2021. Number seven is the resignation board member Zachary Bisconti, effective November 3rd, 2021. Um, I want to say that I'm very sorry to see you guys go. I was looking forward to working with you uh, longer. But on the other hand, I am very excited at the opportunities that you, I guess you guys are going to be challenged with um, going to Washington, D.C. and to South Africa. So that's got to be exciting. Uh, but I do want to thank you, and I want to encourage you to continue to be active wherever you are, because um, I think it's, it's, it's a very beneficial uh, thing to do. And I want to thank you for your service. Uh, so thank you. Thank you and congratulations Thank on your new opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. All right. With that, uh, I think uh, the site visits. So we discussed 630, 8 Marshview, 205 Revere Beach Parkway was the walk down of the apartment building. 17 Washington Street. Joe and I and you were there. Uh, this is a guy who came before the commission with plans. An order was approved. He never got the order. This is back in June or July. He never got the order. I think it's because a file number was never issued by the DEP. The DEP never received copies of the plans. So he, we've kind of gone through all of that. He sent hard copies to the DEP once they... Uh, give it a file number, then we'll, because the commission's already approved it, we'll issue an order of conditions. Um, I think he did everything that the plan said. So uh, that should, right now it's in his court on that one. And that's it. Anything else? So I'll entertain a uh, motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second. And I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We're adjourned. <laughs>